Hi, everybody. Welcome to Georgia Southern Football 99. I'm Scott Pierce, along with head coach Paul Johnson. The Eagles at home again after a tough loss on the road last week up in Boone. The Eagles here to face the Citadel. Comes in another Southern Conference game. And, Coach, how the team respond after that tough loss last week? Well, I thought we had maybe the best practice all year on Tuesday, and then it, then it tailed off. But, uh... You know, hopefully we'll be anxious to play today and go out and see if we can't correct some of the errors and, and, and play much better. What are some of the things you take away from that game last week? Well, that you're certainly not invincible and uh, that when you make mistakes, teams will beat you. And uh, we got to take better care of the ball, uh, play our techniques better and, and stay away from the penalties, all things that uh, we've preached about all year, but uh, sometimes it hits closer to home after you lose a game. That's right. The season definitely goes on. Georgia Southern still in the hunt. And we play a Citadel team who struggled a little bit, but looks like last week, at least, they're getting some of their stuff together. Well, they are. I thought they've gotten better each week. And uh, certainly, they played a killer schedule, I think, of the games they've played. Uh, every 1AA team, with the exception of one's been ranked in the top 20, and, and they beat that team. And then they played a 1A team in Vanderbilt. Uh, found a new quarterback last week, very athletic, and gives them some big play capability. And, you know, Coach Powers and his staff do a nice job. They'll be well coached, so it'll be a tough football game. What are we looking for? Are we going to see a mix of run and pass, or they lean one way or the other? Well, really, uh, you know, they're an option-oriented mm -hmm. team, and I think if they throw the ball, they'd like to throw it off play action. What we've got to do is, doesn't change, we've got to stop them from running the football, and if we can do that, we'll have some success defensively, and offensively, we've got to, to run the ball. We've got to do a better job blocking on the option than we did a week ago, and and uh, hit some play action passes and, and run our offense. Obviously a big day for football here at Georgia Southern. It is homecoming as the Eagles host the Citadel. Don't go away. We'll have a look at the first half highlights coming up right after this. But first, the Coca-Cola play of the day. Everybody, welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 99. The Eagles at home, Paulson Stadium for homecoming in Statesboro, Georgia Southern, hosting the Citadel. A big game today, Coach. You're coming off of the loss from last week, and really a great day to play football, but a little windy. Well, it was a little windy, but it, all in all, it was a great day. I thought, uh, you know, it wasn't real hot. It was cool. It was just a great autumn day. Georgia Southern won the toss, elected to first, so the Citadel's going to get the ball. And on their first possession, our defense came out and really stuffed them early. Right, uh, we made a couple of, of nice plays on defense. They came out and you know, tried to get the option game established, and, uh, and we did a pretty good job in the first series of playing responsibly. And with the defense's big effort, forces the Citadel to punt, Georgia Southern with the ball, and we start to move it, and real fast we see a big play, a 40-yard touchdown pass to Andre Weathers. Right, uh, we were trying to run some, uh, you know, just four vertical routes, and we caught them in cover three, and Dre got behind the strong safety, and. You know, Greg was able to get him the ball and, and for a big touchdown. Quick score, 7-0 Georgia Southern at this point. Uh, early in the first quarter, the Citadel gets the ball back and cannot do anything. The defense was playing very tough. We saw a lot of good play by your defensive line. Right, I thought Von Sellis, uh, Allen played a tremendous game. And, uh, you know, uh, certainly Freddie Pasquetta and Eugene was, were in on some plays. And, uh, you know, they were kind of trying to pick on our outside linebackers. Uh, a little bit early, and, and they had some success early in the first half, but as the game went along, I thought Jamar Jones did some good things as well. On a fourth and one, the Citadel is forced to punt because they're deep in their territory, and here's a big play. They punt it, we recover the punt, and then fumble it, and they get the ball right back. Right, they punt it into the wind, and uh, it was a short punt, and uh, Ann Williams was trying to make something happen, and really picked it up and, and made good yardage with it, just did not tuck the ball away and get it secured, and... Uh, you know, when they hit him as he was going down, he coughed it up, and, uh, and they were able to cover. And with the momentum of the big play, they start then reeling off some, some big gainers on first and ten. Right, they got in a tight end wing set, or it's really an unbalanced set, and, uh, you know, they were blocking everybody down and, and g the guard out and getting the full back, and they really kind of uh, had a scheme there for a little bit, and, uh, and, and they hit some big plays off of it. They take it down close to the goal line, and then they're going to score a touchdown running the option. Right. Uh, there again, we were coming hard off the edge, and uh, you know they got the ball pitched, and we didn't get our guy that had to pitch 
out there quick enough, and they were able to put an end zone. That ties the score seven to seven now in the first quarter. Georgia Southern, when we get the ball back, we start running the ball, and it was evident early on that we were struggling a little bit trying to run it up the middle. Well, we really struggled blocking their inside people. It's uh, you know it ended up a, a lot in there, man on man blocking, and uh, and for the first half anyway, they were winning most of those battles, and we couldn't get our fullback established at all. So that enabled the ends. Uh, to play up the field some, and uh, you know, it was uh, pretty frustrating there in the first half. We just weren't executing very well offensively. We were able to get one first down out of the uh, series, but then we're forced to punt. The Citadel gets the ball back. Our defense continued to play extremely well. Georgia Southern was with the ball back. We're now able to get some yardage. We do have some plays. Greg had one big scramble play for 22 yards. Right. Uh, he, he pulled it down, and we also had a quarterback draw in there uh, on the series, but uh, you know, we had a big play. You know, we'd sprinted out to the right on a, on, a, on a sprint out pass play, and we got an offensive pass interference call for blocking downfield. And, and really, the, the guy blocking downfield was doing what he's told AP. He was down there blocking, and we talked about when the end dropped, we need to run the ball, and we didn't do that and threw it, and, and it was a well deserved penalty because we deserved it. That's right, but we're able to at least get a field goal out of the uh, the series, a nice 42-yard field goal to take us up to the seven. Right, and I thought uh, Chris kicked the ball well today. I mean, he, he was hitting it solid, and it really sounded, uh, you know, coming off his off his foot like he, it was uh, live, and then he was in the game. But the lead did not last very long. The Citadel on their next possession is able to put it together. Their young quarterback uh, showed that he has some talent. Well, he's very tough to tackle. He's slippery back there. I don't know about, uh, you know, he's not a speed burner, mm -hmm. but he's certainly slippery and, and slides around, and he makes big plays for them. They get downfield on a third and 12. They like to go for the field goal. They make it. The score is tied now 10 to 10. Georgia Southern on our next possession, driving the ball, but on second down, we see a fumble, and we had a few of those today. Yeah, we sure did, and, uh, you know, we had uh, a botch snap that we lost. We had a fumble after a pass completion where we didn't tuck the ball away that we lost and one on the punt return. And, uh, you know, we've just got to value you preaching, preaching. We're not doing a very good job as coaches making the guys tuck away the ball and, and secure it because uh, we don't value the ball the way that we need to. Just a few more possessions. Neither team can do anything. Georgia Southern misses a field goal going into halftime. The score's tied 10 to 10 as we go to the locker room. Don't go away. We'll be back with a look at the second half highlights coming up. Football can bring forth a number of emotions on the sidelines from both players and coaches. And while many times it's important to keep things inside, sometimes that's just too much to ask of someone. On a typical week here on the banks of beautiful Eagle Creek, the coaching staff is pretty subdued. But come Saturday afternoon, that all changes. You know, you try to stay even keel. Sometimes I, I get uh, upset at times. Uh, but uh, certainly, uh, Coach Munkin uh, is not afraid to show his emotions, uh, especially on special team plays. I think he chases them down the field. So uh, he gets them going pretty good. And, uh, and Coach Pate gets into the game pretty good. So that's two guys that are pretty uh, livid down on the sidelines. And on game day, Coach Pate sometimes goes to the extreme of bloodying himself in order to inspire his defensive line. A little cold, is that's temporary. A little blood's temporary, you know. All I want them to do is to enjoy playing the game, and, and I think if we play the game up front physically, we'll enjoy it, and more importantly, the Eagles will enjoy that effort. I believe in doing everything aggressively, and other than maybe I'm very quiet and, and very uh, reserved in church, but other than that, I, I, I stay pretty keyed up six days out of the week. Meanwhile, another Eagle coach who might benefit from a little riddling is special teams coach Jeff Munkin. We have a good time when they do things good, and you know we uh, we get we get pretty excited when good things happen, and, and I think it's it's genuine. We we genuinely enjoy uh, seeing those guys score touchdowns and make interceptions and make big hits, and and uh, 
I, I know for me personally, it's 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 fun, and and uh, and I have a good time down there with them. And and uh, in the same sense, when they do things bad, they they hear from us just as well. It it upsets me when they do things badly just as much as it excites me when they do things well. And with all the excitement, the question is, does Coach Johnson fear the coaches may hurt themselves? No, I worry they're going to hurt somebody else running down the field. But, uh, you know, they, uh, they're they into the game as they should be, and, and, and they get emotional, and that's, you know, the only way I know how you play football. as good as last year but we're doing great and the line blocks great we haven't had anything uh, anywhere close so snapping holes are always great so defense will be stuck together played hard uh, played really hard in the second half and just shut them down yeah uh, we've been playing great all, all year long defensively um, uh, uh, maybe the offense numbers going down but we, we're getting into the hardest part of our schedule we knew that yeah we got to be positive I mean a win's a win you know you got to take this one and work build on it for next week I think uh, you know if we can clean up we'll, we'll, we'll play a pretty good game yeah, I think we've had a lot of sloppy, uh, sloppy play, a lot of mistakes, and uh, some we really need to eliminate if we if we want to advance in the playoffs. Hi, everybody! Welcome back to Georgia Southern football. The Eagles come out of the locker room tied with the Citadel 10-10. What'd you tell the folks at halftime, Coach? Well, there wasn't a whole lot to to say. I just I told them offensively that we had to block people. I mean, there's not much you can do on offense that you don't have to block somebody, and we went over the the defense that they were lining up in and what we were trying to do and just asked them, I said, you see any reason why we can't do it? And, you know, they look at it and then defensively we had to make one little adjustment on, on a set, but for the most part we missed some tackles and just, just turn up the intensity and, you know, it's like I told them, we got 30 minutes to see which side wants it to work. Had a couple of bad breaks in the first half, and they continue. We get the ball to open the second half. We get a couple of uh, drives, get a good first down, and then we fumble the ball right back. Yeah, well, that's not really a bad break. That's just a, a you know, we've got to care more about putting the ball away out there when we catch it and, and tuck it away and, and, and get it protected. It, that's happening far too many times this year. And the Citadel uh, then capitalized. They have one big play. They uh, run the option, pitch it for 40 yards, get down close, and get a quick touchdown. Right, they it. hit us on an option play, and we had a busted assignment. A, a guy who uh, should have been on the pitch, I think, took the quarterback, and uh, and to their credit, they hit a big play and got it down on the goal line. And really, it made two good plays to, to start a goal line stand. And on third down, they tried to, to throw a little play action pass and roll out. And, we had a good call on and, uh, you know, had guys and their quarterback just slipped into the end zone. Made the individual play there. The Bulldogs go up 17 to 10 at this point early in the first, uh, third quarter. Georgia Southern gets the ball back. We're able to drive down. And here we see Adrian uh, get in the end zone with a touchdown. Right. Uh, we got in a heavy set down there and, and went off tackle. But uh, big play getting down there was the pass to Sherrard Freeman. And it seemed like it gave us some momentum and we fed off that. And, and once we uh, got down there, we, we picked up the pace a little bit. Uh, we're able to, to run the ball better and get in the end zone. Well, that ball, uh, that pass play you're talking about, tipped by three, two, three people, it's just like you drew it up, right? Yeah, just like we drew it up. <laughs> it was a, a great play by Sherrard and uh, certainly a big play in the game. You can sort of sense a little bit of the momentum change here. It's 17-17 now, Georgia Southern. The Citadel gets the ball back. The defense comes up big with a, a nice uh, block punt at that point. That gives the Eagles good field position. We take it right down and get a quick field goal. Right. Uh, we put together some pretty good plays and uh, came up with a third down and, uh, and we, we really missed an assignment and uh, checked out of a play that, that we should have run on third down and, and didn't do it and didn't make it on the play we did. But Chris came in and got us a field goal and we at least got the lead. Now we're kicking off to the Citadel now. A big play for us. They fumble the ball. We recover, get the ball right back. The offense keeps going. Right. Uh, we talked about Coach Houston and, and I talked about all of you as our kickoff team. When we were kicking into the wind, we certainly wanted to sky kick because the wind was wreaking havoc with the ball. And 
uh, you know, we hung it up there and they misplayed it and uh, our, you know, kickoff team did a great job covering it for us. We saw the middle loosen up a little bit here and Adrian was able to get some yardage and then the big play, the 18 yard touchdown. And when he scored, he showed a little emotion that he doesn't usually show. Well, I think Adrian was a little frustrated. I mean, he was running his tail off and he was running so hard, but he didn't have much of anywhere to go. I mean, they were doing a good job clogging him up. and. When he finally got a little breathing room and could get in the secondary, he looked like the Adrian of old. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, he's not used to being held down either. Right. So with that big touchdown by Adrian Peterson, it's 27 now to 17. Georgia Southern leading. The defense comes up big again. The Citadel cannot move at all. They're forced to punt. Georgia Southern with the ball. We see uh, now you've got J.R. Revere in a quarterback. Right. And uh, Jay went in and did a nice job, I thought. Uh, we made a couple little adjustments on the sideline. And uh, Jay went in and handled it, and uh, we ran a little solid option. He got the ball pitched to Sherrard Freeman for a big game mm -hmm. and uh, was able to, to get it in the end zone himself uh, once we got down inside the 10-yard line. Eight-yard touchdown run. J.R. Revere puts Georgia Southern up 34-17 to at that point. The Citadel cannot move at all. We're able to get the ball back, and we run a little bit. Adrian Peterson able just at the end of the game to get his 100-yard consecutive streak continuing. Right. He was able to pick up about 20 yards, I think, on a trap play that, that got him over 100. And uh, it was one that, that uh, we probably should have tried to run more than we did. But we tried to run some inside traps, and we wasn't having a lot of success with those. And uh, the uh, But he, he earned every bit of it today. I mean, he, he ran his tail off. And certainly, I'm happy for him that he continued the streak. and. And the neat thing is we won the game, and hopefully we can learn and grow from it. And you've got a big game next week. We're going to talk more about that. Georgia Southern on the road up at Johnson City to play East Tennessee State. Don't go away. We'll be back with a preview coming up right after this. everybody to Paulson State. The Eagles big winners over the Citadel today, 34 to 17. Coach, we go on the road to uh, what is a fairly tough place to play, the Mini Dome in Johnson City. It's a very tough place to play, uh, as we call it, the airplane hangar up there. And, uh, you know, it's uh, luckily two years ago up there, we were lucky enough to get a win right at the end of the game. But East Tennessee historically plays well at home. It's uh, on turf where we haven't fared very well this year. And, uh, and they got a good football team. So we're at the point of a season now where every game is like a playoff game for us. Like I said, we get our mistakes corrected. Hopefully uh, come back and practice with a good attitude and get ready to go play a fine East Tennessee team. You know, the Buccaneers are usually one of the, uh, the more stronger teams of the league. And you're going to get them this time coming off a tough loss, just like we faced Appalachian after a tough loss. Right. Uh, I think uh, if the score held up, Furman was beating them pretty good in Greenville today. And, very similar to what we walked into in Boone. Uh, you know, this gives them two losses now. Uh, the, you know, we've got two losses. You got to think that uh, the winner has a, a good shot at, at going to the playoffs, and the loser is going to have to struggle. And once again, uh, the way things work out in the rest of the season, we really control our own destiny. We do with uh, the way things have worked out now. If uh, we can uh, win our last two conference games, I think. Uh, you know, pro probably the worst we'll do is, is share the conference championship. It'll be a three-way tie. There's no way to break it, I don't think, if it ends up being Appalachian State and Furman. And uh, probably more than likely, if that occurred, all three teams would end up uh, going to the playoffs, I would think. Still a lot of football left to play. Two big games next week being the biggest one. We go up to Johnson City. Join us after the game for highlights. For Coach Paul Johnson, I'm Scott Pierce. We'll see you next week.